So I'm a biologist. I teach at a um, well-known engineering institute in the southeast of the United States, Georgia Tech. I support these statements about education, where once nations measured their strength in the size of their armies and their arsenals, the world of the future, in the world of the future, knowledge matters most. If you solve the education problem, you don't have to do anything else. If you don't solve it, nothing else is going to matter all that much. I think teamwork is the way to solve complex problems effectively. As you see here, interdisciplinary teams, there's a synergy. I've got a synergy between biologists, architects, engineers, public policy makers, and artists. Nature also uses teamwork. And I know this from experience. I'm a biological oceanographer. I study how plankton communicate underwater. I work with a fluid physicist, so I work at the interface between science and engineering. And we come up with novel solutions that our community appreciates. I want to share this path to discovery. However, learning is organized by discipline. Students get taught biology and chemistry and physics and engineering in separate classes. In fact, one of our engineering students remarked, I know some biology majors, but interacting with them this, in this class really surprised me about how differently people of different disciplines think. It's surprising how specialized we become um, just after two or three years without realizing this. So how do we break down these barriers between silos? What does this look like? How about this? A whale and a turbine. Perfect. Biology and technology. What is this field called? Biologically inspired design. Here, Frank Fish, a fellow marine biologist, learned that the bumps or tubercles on the leading edge of the whale fin allows it to maneuver. And now they put it on a wind turbine, and they're able to capture wind energy at lower wind speeds. But the most famous uh, bio-inspired design is Velcro. It's used here when the bur burr stuck to the fur, the inventor's light bulb went off in Sir George Maestral. And here we see it on, on the glove of the astronaut's glove of John Young, Georgia Tech graduate of 52. And so now, Kids don't even know how to tie their shoelaces. So how do we teach this? We developed a course in biologically inspired design. It, I advertise it to biologists, but also many different um, engineers, mechanical engineering, industrial and systems engineering, polymer and textile engineering, and material science engineering. I ask the students to find a problem that they're passionate about solving. And here's where the magic begins. OK, here's, my, here's our class. We have 40 students. There's eight teams, five uh, students per team. There has to be at least one biologist. I ask them to they, um, have a design. They name it. So here we have leverage. It's a hierarchical structure. Iron bumper, a layered composite system that dissipates impact, inspired by the abalone shell here. We've got Flotex, a transpiration curtain inspired by the redwood tree. Desert Chiller, a, cross, a, a countercurrent cooling system like in Flamingo Legs. NOLA, a um, bio-inspired levee system for the New Orleans, Louisiana area. Ra Power, a color-sensitive heat regulator inspired by the chameleon, or the Portuguese tortoise beetle. Septivent, a wind, flat wind capture system and symphonic, an aid for the visually impaired. In this class, we have 39% of them are, are women. We also, in, in this particular class, we have 57% are engineers. 9% are designers, although this fall, it looks like I'm going to get a whole um, a higher percentage of designers. We've got 5% that are computational, and then 
29% are biologists, and you see that there has to be at least one biologist per team. When you have two, it gets a little bit livelier. So let's see, let's see uh, what we do is in the class, we teach them content by teaching them lectures about evolution and assessing biological function and case studies by experts in the field of biologically inspired design. And then we practice. We practice search strategies. We practice an analogical reasoning, problem decomposition, quantitative assignments. And so, the, but the first, first day or the first week, they take a walk through nature and study the life around them. Now, this doesn't really look like Atlanta landscape or Atlanta wildlife, but these are photos that I've taken of the natural systems around the, on this planet Earth. And so these are the sources of biological problem-solving principles. The students come back to class and they have to share their findings with their teammates and with their, their classmates. And this is a typical interdisciplinary communication, so I'd like to illustrate the crosstalk. So the biologist says, check it out, I've got this dead fish to swim upstream, gnarly. Engineer says, hmm, the resonant frequency of that dead fish must be equal to the strew-hall frequency of the vortices shed by that bluff body. Fascinating. So to help them communicate, uh, Ashok Goel of the Design and Intelligence Lab in, at Georgia Tech gave us a tool that humans use to think about design. It's called Structure Behavior Function, or what, how, why. When the students come in and describe a bone or the strut of an airplane ring, wing, they have to s limit their discussion to what what is at issue? So the lamellar or layered structure of the bone. How does it work? It reacts to mechanical stress. Why is it important? The bone is able to adapt to the stress of the environment. We also give them another tool, analogical reasoning. And bioinspired design is perfect for analogical reasoning. It's tr the transference of one idea from one domain to another. Bioinspired design works by transferring by making analogies between biology and engineering. And this um, fosters creativity and innovation. As an example of an analogy, sticking is a function that de depends on toxic glue. But to stick like a gecko, a gecko doesn't use glue. It doesn't use, doesn't use suc suction. It actually relies on a completely different way of sticking and this inspired a completely different dry adhesive by my friend uh, Keller Autumn, the gecko guy. You go into his house in Oregon, and the entryway is a climbing wall. So now I'd like to give three examples of, of some bioinspired designs that come out of my class. One is the wind schools. OK, look, this is the group. We've got a nuclear engineer with a biologist with an aerospace engineer, Mekki, Mekki, and a graphics designer. They were passionate about trying to solve the, trying to capture wind energy, but they hated that birds and bats got caught in the turbines. So they turned to nature for inspiration. They looked at how nature uses, in, uses free energy. They looked at how maple seeds capture, um, are able to auto-gyrate just by passive shape structure. They looked at jellyfish, and they pulse to capture the, free, the uh, vortices left by their previous pulse. The geese fly in V formation. The dolphins are able to walk on water. They took these, and they studied and they, um, how these things work. They went deep into the liter literature to dig out the key um, pieces of information. They spoke to Silas Album. He's a mathematician here about his work on flapping foils. They read Nature. They read Fluids and Structures, PNAS, Science, Journal of Fluid Mechanics, Physical Review Letters. These are undergraduates that were going to the primary literature. They figured out how dead fish swim upstream. They, they rely on vortices, bluff bodies, and flexible compliant bodies. They read the work of Mimi Cole on, on, on ecomorphology of the kelp blade. And ruffled blades are able to um, um, receive sunlight for greater photosynthesis and enhances photosynthesis. 
and then they figured it out. They put a compound analogy. They put fish schools together with ruffled kelp, and they came up with the wind flag farm, a um, piezoelectric fluttering flags made of piezoelectric fabric arranged in a school formation. Isn't that beautiful? Would you have thought of something so creative? Okay. Well, they were just ready for their final presentation, and the day before, they were scooped. So an engineer at Caltech announced, John DeBerry announced on MSNBC, schooling fish inspire efficient wind farms. The team just couldn't believe what they read. But I was so proud of them because they were able to make something so creative and interesting within a one 15 semester, um, uh, semester, 15 week semester. Now we are involved with Georgia Tech Housing to put um, bio-inspired uh, wind projects around campus. This was put up two weeks ago, North Atlanta um, Apartments. We also are looking at the Yellowstone ecosystem. The honors class looked at the um, organisms there, and we're focusing on the quaking aspen and their response to wind. And this helps bio-inspired design concepts increases the value of nature to the public. And so this brings me to my second example, Chimera, parkour body armor. Parkour, man, that is a rough sport. You have to be agile, you have to be flexible, and you have to be precise. So they talked to Young He Chang, he's the applied physiologist here on campus, and identified that they wanted to protect the spine. They did a functional decomposition of the sport of parkour, and they focused on impact, two functions, impact and flexibility, and then looked to nature for inspiration. They had 25 different natural systems. They narrowed it down to four. The hedgehog spines, they allow them to bounce. The layered composite structure of the scaly foot snail dissipates impact. Cat's pads are protect where it's needed most. And the armadillo-inspired plates um, fold and collapse during the parkour roll. And so voila, here is your chimera, okay? So take the challenge. Do, um, wear chimera on your net when you next play parkour. And this team then, for their, for their second design, wanted to address um, solar energy collection. They were not satisfied with the efficiency of these solar arrays, so they looked to plants and how they um, bend towards the light. They found out that this hormone um, and, um, enabled the cells to gather up water so that they extended and push the plant toward the sun, okay? And then they, again, did a superb job of analyzing the function and breaking down this complex function, function of maximizing solar energy collection by the plant into two functions, hormone regulation and hydraulic actuation. Then they also broke down the um, technological solution of maximizing solar energy collection, and they were able to match the plant function to the tracking function of the technological design. And they came up with a biologically inspired sun tracking system. The heat exchanger expands the fluid and causes the opposite side to tilt towards the sun. So these were three out of more than 40 different ideas that have been generated over the past six years that we've offered this course. It's currently supported by the Division of Undergraduate Education at NSF. And I use them to illustrate how we foster team creativity, team-based creativity. The five learning goals for transference of biological principles to human design challenges are these. Novel techniques for creativity. Interdisciplinary communication skills. Knowledge about domains that's outside the core training. The interdisciplinary design process. And the application of knowledge across domains. So I'd like to conclude with some remarks that the students make in their final reflections to illustrate how they reach these learning skills. So this class was the first class that I've had that combined analogous biological phenomena to develop solutions for engineering problems. I have also learned to communicate with those in other fields more effectively and hopefully communicate with those in my own field more effectively. 
working with two biologists in my group over the course of the semester, I think I did learn how to better understand biological systems and speak in biological terms. This course has changed my perspective on the interactions between biology and design, and it continually altered and expanded my understanding of how to engage in successful design. Thank you very much.